Hey guys, welcome back to Ben and Brewing's channel. For those of you that don't know who we are, we do product reviews, tutorials, and we have a live chat feature on our website to help you through your Brewdain M1s. Today's episode is a very, very quick one. It's just a mailbag based on a comment that came through our Brewdain 911 chats about a week ago in regards to dial thermometers, the analog thermometers that a lot of people use on their brew systems. A couple of tips for you and maybe some things that you were not aware of. Let's get into it. <music> All right, guys. So uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Brian. I'm from Benham Brewing. Uh, we are our entire channel is dedicated to product reviews, tutorials. We have a live chat feature on our website, benhambrewinghbe.com. Uh, we call it our Brew Chat 911. Um, It'll help you through Brewdy Diamond Ones. You get stuck, chat us up, we'll respond in real time, and we'll help you out. So as I said before, one of the questions that came through a couple weeks ago from Anthony, um, he was mashing in really for the first time. It was his first all-green batch, and he was really struggling with the temperatures uh, and trying to understand what he was putting in as far as water goes versus what his temperature was actually reading. Uh, and he was very confused because he had two thermometers, and they were reading vastly different. The dial thermometer was reading one thing. As you see in that last sentence there, he says, my instant read thermometer is correct but this is the second thermometer i've replaced so basically he's tossed one of them out because it was so inaccurate so one of the things that i want to make sure you, know, you guys keep in mind is that with those thermometers especially the larger dial ones if you get a pretty decent one um you know usually they're they're easy to read like fermatap's a good example of one that's the one that i use blickman engineering obviously has a, a nice one that they use there's others that are out there but check the back of that thermometer you should see, if it's a decent one, a little screw that's on there. Now that screw is actually for adjusting and calibrating the temperature. Basically what it does, when you turn it, it turns a little gear inside that actually rotates the entire dial. So all the numbers and the lines that you see will move underneath the hand, for lack of a better word. Uh, and so you can get it much more accurate. Now a lot of people will take these dial thermometers and they will calibrate them and they do it in ice water because you can take ice, crush it, put water in it, and it is going to be at 32 degrees, um, which is great. Your thermometer is now calculated to 32 degrees. The problem with the analog thermometers is they're not accurate throughout the entire range of temperatures because there's a spring in there that basically winds and unwinds depending on what the temperature is. So at the extreme ends of the spectrum, it's not that accurate. The better thing to do, or at least what I like to do, is um, I, you know, make sure I have a good instant read thermometer with me. Uh, I use a thermopen; it's like a second and a half read time. I love that thing. I'll get a cup of water in a insulated container so it doesn't lose heat, and I will heat it to what I usually mash at, so you know, 150, 155, and I'll hold it there, stick the thermometer in, let it come up the temperature, which takes about a minute or two, verify that temperature with my instant read thermometer. And then I'll take a screwdriver and adjust the dial so that it's accurate. Now, I do it a number of times because as soon as I pull the uh, thermometer out, the temperature starts to drop. If you're able to keep it in the liquid as you're adjusting it, more power to you. I unfortunately was not able to do that. So um, I'll take it out, adjust it, put it back in, let it come up the temperature, stabilize, check again with the instant read and then adjust it a little bit more and adjust it a little bit more until I get it about as accurate as I'm comfortable with. And this usually works really, really well, especially when you're keeping it within that 15 degree range that you're mashing within and mashing out within. So uh, if you are in the market for a new thermometer, make sure that it does have a dial thermometer for those of you that like to have those on your equipment. Uh, the other thing I can't, you know, speak highly enough about is getting yourself a good digital instant read thermometer. It is such a, a, a time saver, trust me. Um, but I kind of want to hear from you guys. Do you trust your dial thermometers? Um, did you know about calibrating it within that very narrow range? Um, is it something that you're not even considering? You'd rather just go digital and forget the dial thermometer. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, as always, if you feel like our little tips brought you some value, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the content that we are uh, continuing to bring you. And I will catch you later, my friends.